All right, take any seat you'd like. Well, good morning, everyone. Um, first of all, can everybody hear me? Give me a thumbs up if you can hear me. All right. Thank you. Oh, uh, my name is Pete Cahill, and I'm one of the judges of the district court. And you have been summoned here as potential jurors in the case of State of Minnesota versus Derek Chauvin, which is a criminal case related to the death of George Floyd on May 25th, 2020. A person charged with a crime has a right. Excuse me. To a fair trial before an impartial judge and an impartial jury. In order to make sure that the jurors who are selected are impartial, the law provides that the court and the attorneys for the parties may ask questions to all the jurors which must be answered under oath. First of all, thank you for filling out the questionnaire and getting it back to us. It gives us a lot of information to start with. And your contribution to the important and serious matter at hand is best served by continuing to provide full, complete, and honest answers to the questions you're going to be asked today. Those questions will follow up on issues from the questionnaire and possibly other topics. Now, after the questioning is over, the attorneys will have the right to excuse some of you from service on this jury, and I may excuse others of you for what is called cause. In either case, it does not mean that you're not a fair person, and you should not take offense in being excused. Also, I ask that you not take any offense at any question that may be asked. We must pry, to some extent, in order to explore some opinions you might hold and to hear about experiences that you've had that might affect your ability to serve in this case. The defendant, Mr. Chauvin, has been charged with murder in the second degree and manslaughter in the second degree. In the normal course of the trial, charges might be added or subtracted from that, but those are the charges as it stands today. To the charges, the defendant has entered a plea of not guilty, which is a denial of each and every material allegation in the charges. I'm not going to have the uh, participants in the case introduce themselves so that we can ask you if you have any kind of relationship with them, either a friendship, acquaintanceship, or a professional relationship. First, for the state. Thank you, Your Honor. Good morning, everyone. My name is Steve Slusher, and I represent the state of Minnesota. Good morning. My name is Christina Marinakis, and I'm assisting with the prosecution. Good morning, I'm Joshua Larson. I'm also representing the state of Minnesota. Good morning, Aaron Eldridge for the state of Minnesota. And for the defense. Good morning, my name is Eric Nelson, along with my assistant Amy Voss. We represent the defendant, Derek Schoen. All right, by a show of hands, anybody recognize or have a relationship, uh, friendship, acquaintance, professional relationship with anybody who just introduced themselves? All right, no hands. Also, by show of hands, anybody uh, recognize anybody else in the room who they might know? All right. Also, the you may see other attorneys uh, for the state who might appear. Those include uh, Matthew Frank, Attorney General Keith Ellison, uh, Jerry Blackwell. Anybody know any of those people or anybody else who works in the Office of the Minnesota Attorney General? Okay, no hands. Thank you. Anybody know anyone who works for Mr. Nelson's law firm or had any dealings with his law firm? Okay, no hands. You were given a list of potential witnesses, and we do ask that if you have not done so, that you review it before uh, your individual questioning, because we will ask you if you know anyone on that list. Now, one of the things the attorneys may not do during jury selection is to instruct you on the law. But I do want you to be aware of some of the uh, concepts that apply in all criminal cases so that you may keep them in mind as you answer the court's and the attorney's questions. And so I will instruct you as follows. First, the charges against the defendant are not evidence, and they create no inference of guilt. No member of the jury should in any way permit himself or herself to be prejudiced against the defendant because a charge has been made or because he has been placed on trial. The defendant is presumed innocent of the charges made against him, and in order for you to find the defendant guilty, the defendant must prove guilt beyond a reasonable doubt. The defendant does not have to prove his innocence. The presumption of innocence remains with the defendant throughout the trial unless and until he has been proven guilty beyond a reasonable doubt according to the law and the evidence admitted at trial. Proof beyond a reasonable doubt is such proof 
as ordinarily prudent men and women would act upon in their most important affairs. A reasonable doubt is a doubt based upon reason and common sense. It does not mean a fanciful or capricious doubt, nor does it mean beyond all possibility of doubt. Now, if you serve on this jury, you and your fellow jurors will be the sole judges of whether a witness is to be believed and of the weight to be given their testimony. Now, there are no hard and fast rules to guide you in this respect, but in determining believability and weight of testimony, jurors may take into consideration the witness's interest or lack of interest in the outcome of the case, their relationship to the parties, their ability and opportunity to know, remember, and relate the facts, their manner, their age and experience, their frankness and sincerity or the lack thereof, the reasonableness or the unreasonableness of their testimony in light of all the other evidence in the case, and any other factors that bear on believability and weight. If on this jury you should rely on the last analysis, upon your own experience, good judgment, and common sense. There are certain things you should not do during jury selection. You are not investigators. You are not to go out and do any looking, and you are not to ask people about this matter. You are not to use the internet to look for information about this case or about the law. Above all, you must not talk to anyone who is involved, either the lawyers or the witnesses or spectators. Do not be offended if the attorneys, parties, or witnesses do not speak to you. They know it would be improper to contact you, except through the normal jury selection process, and they will confine themselves generally to a brief greeting. During the selection process, your family and friends will be curious as to what you are doing. You may tell them you are on a panel of potential jurors in a criminal case, and that is all you should tell them. Since that is all you should tell family and friends, that is all you should tell the general public. So, during the proceedings, please refrain from using Facebook, Twitter, or other social media to announce that you are a potential juror or to comment on this trial. You may access those social media tools, hopefully avoiding any social media news feeds, but please do not publish any information about this case or your thoughts about this case. You do not have to stay away from people and refuse to speak to them. Do whatever you wish, but do not talk about the case, and do not talk at all to anyone involved in it. Now, because of the nature of the charges, this case is receiving media coverage. Do not read about the case in the newspapers or online, and do not listen to news about it on radio or television. This trial, including jury selection, is being televised, but no video of you or any other juror will be, will be taken at any time, now or during trial if you are selected. Also, your name will not be used in the courtroom. You will only be referred to by your random number to protect your privacy. The audio of anything you say will be broadcast unless we need to discuss something deeply personal or extremely sensitive or embarrassing or something that would likely specifically identify you. In that case, I will specifically order that the audio not be broadcast outside this courtroom. In that case, you will still have to answer questions on the record, but without audio or video broadcast. Now, with the exception of juror number 127, we'll have you wait in another, the other courtroom until it is your turn to be questioned individually. Feel free to use all the uh, disinfectant wipes, hand sanitizer, everything else. Please keep your mask on and also keep six feet apart. We are uh, engaged in all these precautions in the courtroom as well. In fact, I'm going to put my mask on uh, once you come up for individual questioning. So with that, uh, you can go with the deputy except for juror number 127.